Hi there, welcome back. Um, we are now at question 23. Um, please excuse the background music. I'm actually at a cafe, so uh, hopefully you can hear me clearly, but at times uh, I might get noisy in here. So question three, um, it's a question about, about um, high school students texting while doing homework. Uh, the study finds 80% of them do it, and they want to find out that if you take 10 students at random, uh, what is the probability that at most seven of these ten students will text? Right. So this question is uh, is gonna, you know, it's this probability question, and and you're really trying to find out, you know, at most seven. What, what does that mean? So if it comes out that zero students are texting, uh, that will satisfy the question. That'll be fine. Uh, one student texting, uh, that'll be okay too. Two students, three students, four students, five students, six students, seven students. Anywhere from zero to seven students texting, that will be satisfied uh, this question over here. So you want to find at most seven out of ten students for text. What, what you don't want is eight, nine, or ten students. Uh, to solve this question is actually kind of long. Uh, it's a long process. There's a lot of um, uh, work to be shown for this one. But you do need to be familiarized with the formula. All right, N combination R. Uh, then we have the probability of students texting to the R power, and Q, uh, the probability of students not texting to the N minus R power. Okay, so the way uh, you're going to solve this question is, uh, you know, you want to find the probability of exactly, of exactly, first start with zero students texting. What's the chances of zero students texting? Uh, you know, from the random 10 students selected, and that is 10 C zero. And now we have the P. P is the probability of texting. It's 80%. So 80% simplifies to 4 out of 5. And you want 0, though. Uh, 1 out of 5 is the probability that students do not text. So not texting. And you want uh, 10 of them. Right? So this, is, this whole formula here is the probability that 0 students are texting. And then you want to add on to the probability that one student are, is texting, so that's one, right? And now the exponent is going to change to one here, and the probability of not texting uh, is going to be 10 minus one, which is nine. Right? And you're going to keep on repeating this process, 10C2, uh, you know, the, the probability does not change, uh, just the number of students, right? This is exactly two students texting, this is the formula for it. Right, and you know, keep on going with you know 10c3 dot dot dot, right? 10c4, right? All the way, all the way, you know, 10c5, right? With the same probabilities plus uh, 10c6, um, you know, probability four out of five. Now we have six power, one out of five, four power, right? Plus, and you're gonna stop at at most seven. So you're gonna Stop at 10c7 with a final, a final formula being 4 to the 5th to the 7th power, 1 5th to the 3rd power. Now look at this formula. Uh, uh, the question is really asking which one of these choices, uh, which one of these choices is part of the process to get the answer, right? So I wrote the help, uh, a long formula here to get the actual probability at that at most seven of 10 students is texting, right? So which one of these four is part of the process? Well, just look at which one matches up one of the formulas you have, okay? Uh, it won't be choice three or four because that's, uh, you know, talking about eight students and uh, nine students. So it's really choice one and two. And if you look carefully, uh, choice one is what we have, a 10 C6, uh, you know, probability is 80%, four out of five. Are texting and we want six of them one to the fifth is four and I think that matches up with uh, this formula over here and that is your answer choice one okay I know it's kind of long um, you know uh, leave comments below if you have any more questions I'll try to uh, answer back or uh, try rewinding and uh, watching again <laughs> thanks uh, let's go on to the next question All right, we're uh, we're getting closer to the end, and uh, you know questions do get more difficult towards the end of multiple choice. Uh, for question number twenty-four, uh, you need to know how uh, the uh, uh, the inverse of cosine uh, looks like uh, on the graph. 
So let's draw it out. Um, inverse of cosine. Uh, looks something like this, and I'll try to draw it. It's like a sideway U, right? And intervals, um, you know, that it crosses over. Uh, I'm gonna start at zero here. Uh, this point is uh, pi over two. Right over here, uh, that is pi. This is three pi over two. And it's gonna finish off at uh, two pi over here. And, uh, you know, if I go to the negative side over here, this will be negative pi over two. Now, the question is really asking, um, you know, if, if you were to chop up the u from where to where, is it a function, right? Obviously, if you if you look at the cosine curve, it goes on forever and ever, and, and it's never a function if you look at an entire uh, curve. But, you know, if you take part of it, which part is a function, right? So let's, let's take a look. Okay. Uh, the first one is from negative pi over 2 to uh, pi over 2. So let's see where that's from. That's from uh, here. Let's say you continue the, uh, the curve from negative pi over 2 to uh, uh, pi over 2 over here, right? That's this section over here. Uh, if we do the vertical line test, does it pass, right? That's to, that's to determine if it's a function or not is doing the vertical line test. And as we can see, uh, there's multiple lines, right, where the line hits two or more points. As, as soon as any of these lines hits uh, two or more points, that is not a function, right? Then, therefore, choice one cannot be it. It's not a function because it does, does not pass the vertical line test. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, choice two. Choice two is from, uh, well, it's pretty much the, the same question. It just added two more points. So again, it won't pass the vertical line test. Uh, choice three is from zero to pi. Uh, zero to pi is over here. This is the zero starting point, and to pi is over here. Okay. So so let's zoom in just on that part, right? Disregard outside the box and just zoom into that part over here. Now let's do the vertical line test and see if it passes. Uh, so we do the uh, vertical line test. You know, just inside this section of the box here, you can see that each red line only touches at most one point. Uh, it, it never crosses the curve at more than one point. Therefore, it passes the vertical line test. And therefore, choice three would be the correct answer. Uh, choice four would be incorrect. Uh, you know, if, if we were to show this box over here, that's from pi over two. Uh, that's over here, pi over two, uh, all the way up to three pi over two. And you can see that the vertical line test I know I'm getting sloppy here, but over here it touches multiple points on the on the blue curve. Therefore, it would fail that test also. Okay, so choice three. All right, it's the only one that passes. All right, question number twenty-five. Um, from the table below, it shows a different. Uh, I guess target heartbeats of people of certain age. Uh, uh, the main thing is uh, actually just you know find out what the question what they're asking for. It says which value represents the linear correlation coefficient round to the nearest thousandth uh, between a person's age and years of that person's target heart rate in beats per minute. Uh, for this question, uh, you do need your calculator, uh, your TI-83 or 84. Let's pull that out. Right, uh, you're gonna click on stat over here, stat. Uh, click on that, open the menu, and I'm gonna click on edit. Yeah, click on edit over here, that's number one. And uh, you know, I, you're gonna enter all this information down, column one, L1. You just type all the age down. I already pre-typed it at uh, you know 20, all the way down to 50. And also the second column, which uh, resembles target heartbeat, just 135, all the way down to 115. This is where you're gonna store your uh, you know, data, your table over here of uh, heartbeats per age. Now uh, we are going to uh, second quit this just to get back to the regular page. Uh, before you calculate everything, make sure uh, you turn on diagnostics. And I'll tell you how to do it. You just need to do this once. Press second, 
go down to zero where it says catalog click on that and you're gonna scroll all the way down to D for diagnostics okay here you go diagnostics make sure you press enter turn this on yeah. and press enter one more time and it says done if you do not have this on it would not calculate for you so now that we have it on I'm gonna click back on stats over here and now I'm gonna go right to calculate and there are many choices over here uh, but the one we're using is choice four uh, choice four uh, linear regression so click on that and we need to tell it which uh, data to use we already stored all the information on the calculator so you just type in L1 that's how to press second and one for L1 uh, use the comma key over here and now you're gonna press second two for L2. Uh, this tells the calculator to calculate the linear regression uh, using the information from line one and line two. Press enter. And there you have it. Uh, we're gonna look for R, the last uh, row over here. R, that is your correlation coefficient, right? And it's negative 0.999. So uh, look for the choice that resembles that. That is choice one. So that is your answer. Mark this down. Choice one is your answer.